Welcome to the March 2019 episode of Core Safety TV, brought to you directly from the National Mining Association. Slips, trips, and falls are often the causes behind many of mining's most serious accidents and even fatalities. Just two weeks ago, a contract miner in Comal County, Texas, was killed when he was changing drive belts on a log washer motor. The miner lost his balance and fell backwards through a narrow gap between two of the log washers, landing on a cable tray nine feet below. Now, falls from ladders are particularly common in mining operations. And since March is National Ladder Safety Month, as designated by the American Ladder Institute, we thought it's a good time to talk a little bit about how you can be more safe when using them. Did you know that more than 120 miners are injured each year from incidents involving falls from ladders? You really need to stay alert when climbing fixed or portable ladders, no matter how short or tall they are. And you need to always use a safety harness or lanyard. Core Safety has a great infographic on ladder safety that you can print out and refer to if you want to know more. You can find it at coresafety.org or you can email me for it at info at coresafetytv.org. So how can you be safe on ladders and avoid becoming one of those miners that are injured on falls from ladders this year? Well, we suggest following these six tips. First, wear safe shoes or boots that have heels with a defined front edge. Second, remove any contaminants, clean debris, mud, ice or grease from the ladder and from your gloves and shoes. Then inspect the ladder for any defects such as broken, loose, or bent parts before climbing. It's also important that you face the ladder, whether you're climbing up or down. And do so very carefully. Never jump from a ladder or climb more than one rung at a time. Lastly, maintain three points of contact at all times. When climbing, don't carry anything in your hands. Use a backpack or a shoulder strap for tools and personal items. Again, you can get a downloadable copy of these six ladder safety tips to print out for yourself on our website at coresafety.org. Now, obviously a fall from a ladder, or from anywhere, will require that the incident be reported and often investigated. You can learn more about this in Core Safety's module number 14. Meanwhile though, here's a quick video nugget to give you an overview. Core Safety's module number 14 focuses on incident reporting and investigation. The objective of an accident investigation is to determine the root cause of the mine accident, to utilize and share this information with the mining community and others for the purpose of preventing similar occurrences. Always remember, incidents can't be investigated if they're not reported. So, all personnel should know what a reportable incident is within each company and as defined by regulatory requirements and company policy and everyone should understand they're expected to report an incident to management in a timely manner. There are two types of incident categories, those that are considered reportable to regulatory authorities and those considered non-reportable. When a safety and health incident occurs that is mandated by law and regulations to be reported, the investigation should be promptly reviewed to prevent it from occurring again and also promptly reported. If the incident is considered non-reportable, such as a near-miss event or something causing property damage, it should still be investigated, analyzed, corrected, and integrated into your safety and health management system. Core Safety's module number 14 will help you to understand and report all recordable, reportable incidents. Investigate all incidents to establish root cause as appropriate and capture lessons learned and root cause data for management review and communication to employees. All right, let's take a look now at our core four tips for the month of March. These all pertain to module number 14. Tip number one, investigate all accidents to determine the root cause why did the accident happen? Or why did it nearly happen? Tip number two, share information to prevent similar occurrences. The more we talk about how to avoid accidents, the safer we'll all be. Tip number three, compile all of the root cause data and forward it to management. Tip number four, even incidents that are considered non-reportable to regulatory authorities, like near-miss events, should still be analyzed for corrective action. 
Next, some mining operations are finding that the use of drones can help keep miners safe by exposing them to fewer risks. Here are some rock-solid insights about that. We have several applications that involves personnel. And blasting, of course, is one that can get closer without risking personnel. If a fly rock hits a drone, it's not a big deal because we use really inexpensive drones for those flights. So we've also done underground where you can send the drone, for example, into a tunnel or an underground opening without sending a person in there. We can also carry, for example, a gas sensor on the drone to send it out to leach pad to check for gas without sending a person with a gas sensor. In the early days of mining, they used to use canaries underground, and when the canary would die or get sick, the miners knew that conditions were not conducive to human habitation of the mine, and they would get out. In this case, we can send a drone into some very tight spaces. It can sample, it can gather information about what the mine looks like, and to Erica's point, that it's a safer way to investigate and learn what you need to know before you put humans into an underground mine. There are also other applications that we couldn't do before. For example, we can inspect buildings or roofs that you can't send a person up there because you know the roof is have some structural problems or something, so it's not safe to walk on. But the drone can fly over it and inspect it or other kind of buildings. Power lines is another place that we're using drones to do inspections instead of having people go close up to inspect. So there are a lot of different inspection jobs that can be done remotely with personnel in a safe area. In closing, a quick congratulations to Prairie State Generating Company, one of our core safety certified mining operations, PSGC's power plant team was just recently recognized with the Southern Illinois Occupational Safety and Health Excellence Award for General Industry. The award was created to promote and improve safety culture in higher risk industries. And safety is certainly a core value at PSGC. So we extend a special congratulations to the great folks at PSGC for this important achievement. All right, that's all for March. We'll see you again here next month. For Core Safety TV and the National Mining Association, I'm Nelson Duffel. Be safe out there, and thanks for watching. To share one of your safety stories, videos, or photos, email us at info at coresafetytv.org.